guess he cut me off again. <laughs> uh, I hope you can hear my heart tonight. I wish I could believe that everyone in here tonight knew what we just sang and really, truly believed it to the depths of our heart. I uh, have come to the point in my life that uh, sometimes I don't sing the songs that we have because I don't really feel like that's what I want the Lord to do with me. Anybody else there with me? One of the phrases in the song, sing, 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 is you're the one we're living for. Mm. I don't want to be hard on you tonight, okay? I, I really want to encourage you. Sounds like a pastor, I guess, but how well do you know the Scripture? Better yet, how well do you understand the Scriptures? Do you really believe what the Word of God says? Now, it's easy to nod your head and say, yeah, I believe. But it's a different thing to have a lifestyle that speaks those Scriptures out. You all with me? I'm not beating you down, but I'm just saying, if, if, if we really were living our lives totally for Jesus Christ, would there have been something you would have done a little bit different today? Oh, man. That's tough. It's tough to walk out yeah, Acts 1.1 1, 1 says, uh, Luke was writing, you understand Luke wrote not only his gospel, but also the book of Acts when he was writing to Theopolis. He said, I write everything that Jesus did and taught. <clears throat> you see, everything that Jesus did taught something. And everything he taught, he did. There was another phrase. Grateful that we hear, you hear us. Now, there's a couple of scriptures that I try to live by. One's Jeremiah 33.3. How, how many of you know what Jeremiah 33.3 says? You ought to get that one down in your spirit. It says, call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things beyond your comprehension. Whew. He does that. The other one's in 1 John that says, This is the confidence I have that if I ask anything of God, I know that he hears me, and if he hears me, meaning that he does, if he hears me, I have those things I ask of him. Now, understand, we've got to ask according to his will. Okay? I don't suspect if all of us wish for a brand new Cadillac or some expensive car tonight that we'd have it tomorrow, okay? Because I just, I, I could guess that that would not be God's will for every one of us. Although the scriptures do say that my God owns the Cadillacs on a thousand hills. <laughs> Near God is where I am changed. This is not what I plan to do tonight. <laughs> Near God is how I'm changed.
Well, how much time did you spend near to him today? Or were we so occupied with the things of today that, that had to be done? I know most of us probably work for a living. I'm retired, but that don't mean I don't work, okay? I got news for you who are looking for retirement. <laughs> in fact, I can't find a thing in the Word of God that says that we are to retire. It does say we're to persevere to the end. Do we really want to be changed? And that last song said, wrap me in your arms so that I can, now I'm twisting the sands just a little bit, Tommy, correct me if I'm wrong, but it says, wrap me in my arms so that I can be changed to be like you are. Can we get honest tonight? Do we really, really want to be changed to be exactly like Christ was? I know that's probably the desire of our heart. But uh, what are we doing to make it possible? If you know the scriptures, how much of a part of your life are they to you? Put in a few words, are you walking out what the Scripture says? Somewhere I get the idea that the Scripture says that in them is life and death. Mm. That's what John 5, 24. Turn to John chapter 5. I'm going to start at verse 1, but just since I've said that. Uh, John 5, 24, I'm reading from the American Standard Version. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, you, he, this is Jesus speaking, mine's in red, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment but has passed out of death into life. So I understand that to say to me that his word gives me life. Jesus gave us life, is it not? He is the word of God. So this, this book's all about him, right? So he is life. Did you stop today to spend time with the word? I mean, now every morning I start my morning off with reading the scriptures this is the fourth year I'm in now reading the scriptures on a daily basis and I will have by the time I finish this year have read the entire Bible through the last four years just a little bit every morning a little bit every night now I don't count that necessarily as spending real intimate time with Jesus Y'all with me? That's just reading the word so that I can get it in me, okay? But it's not digging out what will change my lifestyle and make me effective walking it out. Okay? Y'all understand? So I'm asking, with all the activities that you took on today, everything that you had to get involved in, some of which you probably wish you had not had to get involved in, did you take time to spend time, intimate time, with God's Word? I'll tell you, it'll make a difference in your life. I think a lot of times we'll give it lip service. If you spent time with Him, what did He say to you? I'm convinced at this point in my life, you know, I got a lot more behind me than I got in front of me. 
Y'all understand what I'm saying? If, if statistics are true, then I'm living on borrowed time. The Bible says three score and ten, that's 70. If by chance you get 80, well, I'm, I'm the seed of Abraham, and Abraham was promised 120 years, so y'all, y'all just hang out, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to get this body back in some shape that it's lost so that I can maintain a, a, a reasonable lifestyle at 120. If the Lord tarries. And at this point, I don't think he's going to tarry that long. In, in the sixth chapter of John, and I'm not, boy, if I don't move, I won't get there. But uh, in the sixth chapter of John, uh, verses 41 through 58, and I'm not going to read, the, read those, but Jesus said he was the bread of life. <laughs> many of you tasted of the bread of life today I mean really tasted of it have you feasted on the bread of life today or did you come tonight expecting to get a little taste of the bread Jesus said to those uh, scribes and Pharisees that the manna that they ate in the wilderness only fed their natural bodies and they died, all of them. But he said, you who eat of my flesh will live forever. If, if, if I could do anything that would challenge you feast upon the word of God daily I do it because that's how important life is to us we can go through the routine and live 70, 80, 90, 100 years and never experience feasting on the word of God people are hungry and we try to satisfy that hunger in many different ways. But I'm telling you, there's only one way to satisfy that thing that's way down in your gut. It's always, I love to eat. <laughs> Some of these guys that I eat lunch with can vouch that, okay? Because I always eat breakfast. And then I get a call and say, you want to go have breakfast at 11 o'clock? Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> do, you, do you believe we, we use this scripture Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever do y'all really believe that scripture I mean really believe it that everything he said everything he taught everything he did was an example for oh, you and I to walk out in our life. Do you really believe that? Or am I putting words in your mouth? Huh? Pastor and I talk about these things sometimes. And very frankly, I'm always saying, you, you folks got to love me. I don't care whether you like me or not, okay? But you got to love me. Because the word says you have to. But if you and I really, truly, gut bottom feeling believe the word of God, this place would be full tonight. Yeah, it would be a miracle. But my God's still doing miracles. I testified that tonight. My wife's doing what they told me she couldn't do.
Very frankly, I'm doing what they tell me I can't do either. Go to John 5, verse 1. I cannot get where I need to get, okay? But I'm going to start anyway. You have to understand that my preaching or teaching or whatever you want to call it is different from most people's. Because I believe every scripture in the Bible is inspired by God. In in Luke's gospel, boy, I'm going to run around the rabbit, okay? May as well, if I can find that verse real quick. Uh, just have to wait till I get there. It, it, it changed up on me, okay? Turn over to Luke's gospel, chapter 1. And I've said this a number of times in here. It's the, it's the account of Mary being impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Verse 34 says, Mary said to the angel, they've been having a conversation. He says that she's going to conceive, bear a son. His name will it be Jesus, uh, Jehovah, salvation. Mary said to the angel, verse 34, How can this be since I am a virgin? The angel answered said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and for that reason the holy offspring shall be called the Son of God. Incidentally, he's talking about creative power of God. You hear me? The Holy Spirit is the creative power of God. You got the Holy Spirit in your life? You got the creative power of God dwelling in you in a flesh body behold verse 36 even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived, conceived a son in her old age and she who was called barren is now in her sixth month verse 7 37 for nothing will be impossible with God the original says no rhema is without power you know, there's two words in the Greek for word rhema and logos rhema is when you ever had this situation where you're trying to get something to work and all of a sudden the light bulb comes on and you got the answer and you say yeah that's it that's rhema and what that literally says is that every word of God has the power within itself to make what it says come to be y'all get that every word of God every time we pick this thing up and read it whatever it says that word in and of itself has the power to make that word real now folks I'm telling you if you ever get that down in your spirit a lot of things are solved a lot of problems are solved but we don't believe it as a whole as a church we don't believe that. Y'all still love me, don't you? Go back to John chapter 5. We'll get there maybe. The scripture says, I'm trying to explain why I do what I do with the scripture, okay? I don't mean to twist it. I don't mean to turn it. But this is God's love letter to Jerry Campbell, okay? My name is all through this thing. Most of them have my name on the front of them. Okay, so this is to me. I don't know what yours does, but that's what it is. He says, verse 1, after these things, after these things, you have to go back and see what these things were about, okay? If you look at chapter 4, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time there, but Jesus goes to Galilee. He, he meets this Samaritan woman, Gentile, that's you and I, at a well. She wanted some natural water to satisfy the thirst that was in the physical body. And Jesus said, I am the water, living water. If you knew me, out of your belly would flow rivers of water. 
everything you need to be satisfied. Whew, boy, I'd preach. Ain't got time. Then, then, then she talks about worshiping. And he says, go bring your husband to me. The living word. He knows all and sees all. Go bring your husband. Well, I don't have a husband. He said, you're right. You've had five and you're living with another man now already. Okay? Then, then the occasion is that uh, the, uh, many of the people believed because of what the woman did and then they came to Jesus and because of that, many of them believed and then he healed a, what does it say? A nobleman's son. So after these things had occurred in uh, Samaria, there was a feast of the Jews, verse 1. Passover, if you will. Main feast of the Jews. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He left the Gentile area and went up to New Vision. The center of worship. Amen? Y'all understand what I'm saying? I just have to get it down to where I understand it, okay? But he left the busyness, if you will, of the ministry. And he goes up to where there is worship going on and praise. Didn't even know what they were worshiping. It, it, if you will, there was a change in his focus. Anybody here need to change in their focus tonight? Need to get off of those things that seem to be, oh boy, taking so much of your time. Anybody like that? I had jobs like that. From way before dawn to way after dark six days a week anyway verse 2 now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethesda Bethesda oh I don't know how to get there the great shepherd if you will the shepherd of all shepherds came through the sheep gate. The living word of God was in their presence. And I have to say, most of them didn't even know what was going on. <clears throat> Do I dare? I wonder sometimes on Sunday morning how many people really understand the presence of the Almighty God that we serve. There are times, in, and I'm not saying every Sunday morning, but there are times when we're in here worshiping and I am lost and enthralled in His love and in His presence. And I think, God, why doesn't everybody sense this? You see, there are times when the anointing of God is so powerful and sometimes people hesitate to respond and it's gone I speak from experience there are times when the anointing is so powerful it's time for people to take a step and you plead and you ask and you urge and nothing happens and then it's gone it's gone and it is the anointing that destroys the yoke. It is the anointing of God through an individual. You see, He still uses flesh. He walked in the flesh body on this earth and He's still using flesh man because His Holy Spirit is in you and I to do the things He did, to teach the things He taught if necessary, to beg and plead for people to respond. It's 
so the great shepherd was there at the pool of mercy that's what that word means Bethsaida the house of mercy boy isn't that what we all need God's mercy in these, verse 3, lay a multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, and withered. <sighs> Out of all the people that were there, and we'll see as we go down this scripture, Jesus only touched one. Now don't ask me why. I wasn't there. But out of all the people, he only touched one. They were sick. They were lame. They were destitute. They were blind. Now, there's some question about the latter portion of verse 3 and 4, but I believe it's still the Word of God. It said they were waiting for the moving of the waters. For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then first, after stirring up the water, stepped in and was made well from whatever disease with which he was afflicted. I don't know what caused those water to stir except the Bible says an angel did it. I believe the Bible's true. Some say it was a natural effect, but whatever it was, whether it was natural or God incited, if I can use that word, the first person who stepped in was healed. Mm. I learned a long time ago when... Uh, when ministry is going on and somebody calls for certain things for people to come forward and be prayed for, boy, I'm one of the first ones to get up. I don't want to miss anything God's got for me. And I always need something. At least I think I do. Listen to the word. A certain man was there who had a permanent condition. All of his life. Now, I know your Bible doesn't say that. But he was 38 years with this affliction. And that was probably a normal lifespan for that age. So I'm assuming that whatever was wrong with him, he was born with it. And all his life, he had that great affliction. And didn't even, it didn't even enable him to roll over on a bed. Where he was laid, he laid. That'd be tough, wouldn't it? 38 years in his sickness. And when Jesus saw him lying there, and had foreknowledge. Boy, this thing just full of stuff. How would you like to have foreknowledge? Some things it'd be good about. Some things I'm not so sure. Jesus had foreknowledge. Yeah, I say it. <laughs> if you and I are going to be like Jesus, you reckon we can have foreknowledge? Whew. I do. I have had on occasions. He'd been there. Jesus knew, saw him lying there, and knew that he'd already been in a long time in that condition. And he, Jesus said to him, do you want to get sick, uh, get well? Do you want to get well? Seems like a arrogant question to me. If he knew a man had been, for all intent of all of his life, an invalid, 
You want to get well? I thought that kind of dumb question. I'm not saying Jesus is dumb. Don't misunderstand me. But it is kind of a dumb question. Do you want to get made well? Do you want to get made well? <clears throat> you see, I have to say that this man had Jesus' attention. He had a need. And Jesus knew it. And knew how long he'd had that need. And so, he asked him the question, and then the man said, I'm depending on flesh. You know what he said? I have no man to put me in when the water stirred. Lying there for however long he'd been laying there waiting for some man to do something. And he makes that statement looking at the bread of life. At the water of life. At Jehovah Jireh. My great provider. Nobody's going to help me. Can't do it by myself. I'm just going to lie here and waste away. Now there's a lot in that scripture there. Why would no one help him? If the scriptures are true, and as I understand them, there were many occasions where people were healed. Why didn't one of those who had been healed help him? Anybody in here been healed? You ever ministered in that healing? Healing to other people? Oh, time flies when you're having fun. The guy had Jesus' attention. He said, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when that water stirred up, but while I'm going, another steps down before me. You know, that. Uh, I hope I'm not getting too much out of this scripture. Couldn't get in, he couldn't move fast enough, and people were running to get healing. Most of us will seek physical healing by one means or the other. Now, I believe in doctors, okay? I have an appointment to go back to one next week for some problems that keep occurring. But, uh, I'm doing some other things to try to correct that too. I'm praying and asking God to touch me, and he's done that on numerous occasions. Because the God I serve hears and answers me. Not always the way I want, but he always answers. And uh, so anyway, people run to gain healing sometimes. Particularly if it's a physical element. Now, if it's a spiritual element, I don't know whether we run to get a healing from that or not. <sighs> yeah, I said that too. Because sometimes we are hurt spiritually. And I don't know, we either think God can't deal with that or doesn't want to deal with it or... Else we don't want somebody else to know about it. Mm, now I'm getting messy, aren't I? And here's the other thing. 
some people like to be sick. Now, I'm not saying they like the misery with it, okay? But you know what a, 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 a affliction does for me? Gets me some special attention. I see some of you been there. Oh, I love attention. And I have to confess in the past that sometimes I've milked it for all it was worth. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we'll use that. We'll use that to get some attention. Now, I'm not accusing anybody. I should say I'll use it, okay? And I do know some other people do too. The th other thing we see in that is the guy did not answer Jesus' question. You ever have a conversation like that? Jesus said, you want to be made well. And he said, well, I can't be made well because somebody gets there ahead of me. He didn't answer the question. Jesus said to him you know the amazing thing to me apart from the prayer in John 17 where Jesus prayed for his disciples just before he ascended and where he prayed for you and I that's the longest prayer that I know of that Jesus prayed the next longest is the example that we call the Lord's Prayer and I don't find anywhere else where Jesus prayed long, drawn-out prayers talking about the conditions or the circumstances or the symptoms. He says to this man, Arise, take up your bed, and walk. Arise, take up your bed, and walk. And what do the scripture says? Immediately, the man took up his burden, if you will, and walked. Can you imagine a baby coming out of the womb and walking upright? I can't. But here was a man who'd been an invalid for 38 years you know what happens to the muscles when they're not used for that period of time they don't work that's the biggest problem with us getting old we quit using some of those muscles we don't push them like we did when we were 20 and 30 and they don't respond the older you get. Warning young people, keep working them. Because if you don't work them, what is it? If you don't use it, you lose it. If you don't use it, you will lose it. But immediately, do I dare say spontaneously, you know, the guy at the gate with Peter, the disciples when they were going in, Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have you, I, I give you. In the name of Jesus, earth arise. And he went jumping and dancing to the temple. Can't dance like he used to. That was the Sabbath on that day. And in that day and age, as in most of our churches today, you weren't supposed to do things like that. I want to get over here to my notes. The effect of the living Word of God 
brought immediate results. I don't know why. Well, I do know partially why, but I don't know absolutely why God has gifted me in the way that he's gifted me. But I have faith to believe that when I pray for a people for physical healing, they are healed. I mean, that's what God's Word says. So if His anointing is upon me to do that, I have seen people healed dramatically. Do I dare say because of my faith? And I have seen them walk out of a building like this and get out the front door and they've lost their healing because they did not have the faith to believe. But that's true. You remember the occasion where the, the, friend, the four friends left the friend down through the roof and Jesus spoke to the man and said, because of their faith, you're healed. Not because of his, his friend's faith. healed he felt the power of Christ's word healing him and immediately he was made whole and it was the Sabbath and he carried his bed now there was a bold man because doing that he could have been stoned when Jesus touches your life and does something dramatically in your life, you ought to shout it from the rooftops. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And I don't know what you want to do with that because time's gone. But I would be remiss if that I, I did not ask any that want to be prayed for to come forward. Tommy slipped out. But, uh, I'm going to leave it like that. If you will, stand with me for a word of prayer. And if you have an affliction and you uh, feel like now's the time that you want to be prayed for, I'd be open to doing that. Brandon, I'd ask you to assist if we have anybody come forward, okay? Let me pray. Father, I thank you for the privilege of sharing your word. As I always do, I feel so inadequate. I know that nothing in me is of any good. Nothing that I say can change a heart like you but your word says that we can be changed that we can be healed that we can be made whole and Lord I give this service to you that you might do with it whatever you want to do I offer myself to be used of your precious Holy Spirit Lord, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there are those here who need a touch, a special way to know that you are real and you have not changed. And I give you glory for that.